children. Many people asking on Twitter, what about the men? And that's where the discussion was left before we took the break. So let's rejoin Ayanda now to find out what are some of the ways that we can incorporate men into this discussion because there is abuse against men too. Abusive behavior seems to have this cycle that repeats itself, whether it's towards women, children or men. So let's cross over to Ayanda once again. Well, thank you very much for that, Valen. Yes, that question comes up quite a lot when we focus on issues regarding women and children. What about the men? Throughout the course of the morning, the minister has been speaking about a number of initiatives trying to incorporate men in making sure that they are not victimized or sidelined in themselves when it comes to uh, the empowerment of women and to making sure that the uh, violence against women and children is eradicated. That, that doesn't mean by default that we don't care about the men or issues affecting the men. Remember, this is something that we all need to deal with. This is something that affects all of us, both men and women. So the empowerment of women is not necessarily the sidelining of men, but it's for the betterment of this country that you and I call home, that we love. And talking about this country that we love, uh, women and men, I suppose, in the rural areas, oftentimes sidelined when it comes to what's at the forefront of what's happening in the country in terms of development, in terms of uh, economic empowerment, etc. So we want to turn the spotlight on rural women now who may or may not benefit from campaigns such as the 16 days of activism for no violence against women and children. Are they able to lift up their hands and say, count me in? We know that sometimes even negotiating something as simple as a condom and having sexual relations with their husband is something that is quite difficult and can be a matter of life and death. You and I may take that for granted, but for them, the power dynamics in their relationships are such that they cannot speak out. So let's focus on rural women now. I can't see if this is table number 16 or table number uh, number 10. I can't see if it's a zero or a six, but it's Georgina Sambani. And Georgina is from Im uh, Imbasa, wanting to speak to us about the plight of women in rural areas. If we can get a microphone to that area, I know that she has been spotted and identified. Have you got a mic with you? There we go. Okay, I thanks for having this moment. My question is, how can we escalate the program uh, to reach in the rural areas? As we know, the process of abusing is uh, the bread of every world. Thanks. Thank you very much. How do we make sure that these messages reach the far-flung areas of South Africa? Okay. But thanks, Ayanda, for that question. Um, I've indicated that uh, our program is going to be 365 days. I've indicated that we're going to have national dialogues in various areas. Some of the areas we'll be targeting, it's the rural areas because we must reach out to those women. Um, because those are some of the women who are even more challenged and victimized than in any other part of, 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 our, of our country. So when we reach out, we go to those areas, we hope we'll be able to meet persons like Samba who, somebody now, who can help us in making sure that women do attend. But also, as we all know, when you talk about rural areas, you're not just talking about the same situations as here. Patrick, it's worse. The cultural issues are worse. The abuse of women becomes a norm. So we really have to go out in making sure that young children, young girls know their rights, but also they're not being used as objects. For instance, they're being married, whether they want it or not, they're being pushed into marriages. We must really make sure we build awareness, but make sure that they understand their rights. One of the key issues when we deal with uh, girl children, it's also about making sure we move away from stereotypes, which says you don't have to educate a woman or a girl child because in any case they're going away. Make sure that we empower them. So, it's a process, it's some of the issues which are going to be very complex and difficult, but we've got to confront them. That is why we're consciously taking a decision to go to rural areas and have national dialogues at various levels in empowering through information, but also being able to understand what are the challenges in being able to come up with uh, solutions to those challenges. Minister, I think this is something that I just simply cannot escape. The more we try and deal with it, the more it just surfaces. The issue of men feeling sidelined. I think, I think the, the, the empowerment of women and making sure that we get rid of gender-based violence is presenting a new set of problems yeah. where men are now starting to feel sidelined. We know women uh, are making inroads. I mean, at the SABC, we pride ourselves in having uh, just recently promoted a, a large number of women to key positions. Uh, you know, and we know government is also making 
making an effort. And with that, also women starting to make inroads in, in the boardrooms, perhaps not as quickly as we'd like, but they're starting to earn their own income and, and slowly make sure that they're, 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 they're making a name for themselves. This makes men feel vulnerable. They were seen as the provider, the head of the house, the breadwinners. This is now presenting, as I said, a new set of, of challenges where they feel sidelined. It's a question from table number three. Uh, from Seoul City, it's a question, table number 11, Mashilo Mnisi. On Twitter, everybody's saying, what about the men? I know we've tried to deal with it, but let's perhaps deal with it again. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, and thank you, Minister. I think specifically it's not about being sidelined as such, but it's also acknowledged that as much as we work with women, these are the women who go back home to the men who may not necessarily be empowered. So it's at the point where what is it that we do specifically to empower men to understand that gender-based violence is unacceptable, to also understand that looking after your children is your responsibility, it's not a privilege. At the same time, to also understand that as men, unless we acknowledge that we need help, we will not be able to make a difference. So it's not about sightlining, but it's also about being involved and also partaking in processes that are going to be beneficiary for all. I think also what I want to emphasize is that sometimes we talk about the results of things, and then we forget about the family itself. Mm. Because these very children that Mama spoke about in terms of drugs, they are not street kids, they've got mothers and fathers. Mm -hmm. The number of challenges we have is that, you know, there's a program that at Seoul City we have called Families Matter. Now, when you look into that, there's a poster that says, if you want to see the end, look at the beginning. And there are times where we tend to talk about things without necessarily looking into how we bring our children. The socialization that was spoken about earlier on. Mm. It's now Christmas time. We're going to be buying our sons guns as toys. Mm. We're going to be allowing them to be socialized that you get killed or you kill. Mm. And they get accustomed to that. And therefore, as men, recently I actually sort of like uh, checked some 21 things that men can do better than women, such as playing with your children. Go fishing with your children. Uh, reading, it's actually said scientifically that if fathers read for their children when they're still young, they actually stand a better chance to perform better when they're at school. So the point I'm trying to put across is that it is not about women, it's about society. Yep. The problem you're dealing with is a societal problem and you all have to get involved in. Now, from a South African men's action group, that where I happen to be a chairperson of the board, we're actually saying we are for working together with men and women, but also making sure that LGBTI and all other marginalized and man, the minorities are not neglected in the process. I uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I agree fully. You know, he, he has said it all. Because the issue for us, when you talk, we, that's why I'm saying our premise, our departure, it's our own constitution. We have a beautiful constitution. And that's where we need to start dealing with the issue of equality and how best do we get empowered. But also the, the other point which I want to pick up, it's the issue of family the unit called family. It's critical in society because that's where socialization starts, as he indicates, including boys. Mm. Uh, how you teach your boy not to cook, how you say your, your boy child must not clean, it starts there to say, no, 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 you must be masculine. So as we socialize our children, as we buy toys for them, it becomes very, very important. But also I agree, fathers in South Africa or in society as a whole need to come and play a role in building up or grooming up their families and making sure that they are there with their children. You know, I must say, for instance, uh, our society, or generally how we are brought up, especially in the African society, is that the man brings the money, the mother takes care of the children. We must change that. Whether the father works or not work, they also have the same responsibilities in, in nurturing the children. So that's where we need to start. So I agree with him fully that men have a role. And I don't think that leads to men being lesser human beings, but it leads to partnership. I think that's what is important. Mm. They need, they come together as partners. And if you look at families where the mother and the father understand their responsibilities, those kids are, are brought up in a completely different environment where they understand that my mother is not better than my father. Both are important. I love them the same way. So that's the messaging which we've got to start dealing with in society and making sure that men play a role in their own homes, 
in their own backyard because if they can do that, then it will be easier for them to engage broadly in society. There's no intention of empowering women to undermine men. Yes, we know there are women sometimes when they get empowered and get better, they believe that men are lesser than them. It's a, it's a societal problem again because we don't want anyone being oppressed. We're not dealing with discrimination at different times. It's my turn, it's your turn. No, we have to advance an equal society. That is why all of us, all of us, both men and women, we've got to treat each other and respect each other as people. And if we can do that, then we'll have better, be better mm -hmm. partners in our relationships. Indeed, and I guess I do think that is deserving of a round of applause. Indeed. Because we, we also find instances where women are, are the, the perpetrators yeah, of abuse violence. against other women. I mean, you find in the boardroom having a female boss who wants to lord it over everybody else that now it's my authority being very abusive to their subordinates, etc. I've never experienced that mm. personally. Mm. But I know that uh, when uh, some climb the corporate ladder, they want to close the door behind uh, themselves so that other women don't come in. And they will be so harsh to their subordinates, female subordinates, to put them in their place and then of course we get women perpetuating violence against children yeah. who abandon the children as you sp speak of I mean I think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday where there was a story of an infant being dragged through the streets of Soweto by a dog you ask yourself where is the mother you get mothers dumping children in, in, a, in a dump in Alex, for example, where the child gets bitten by rats. You know, you ask yourself, where is the mother in that situation? Granted, the mother must have had a difficult circumstance themselves to be able to do such, but you can see that women themselves can also be uh, participators in the violence against other women. And that brings me to, is it table number 17? I understand we have a group of young ladies there uh, from the Twine Drop-In Center for Abused Women and Children. Uh, under uh, Ms. Mushimate, if you can, I think Mushimate is in table number eight or ten. The numbers are a little bit blurred right now, but I know that it's, it's a center that makes sure that if you are in distress or vulnerable in one way, shape, or form, that you can seek help and you don't have to either neglect that child or neglect your duties and responsibilities as a mom. I'm not quite sure where the microphone will be going. Is that yourself? If we can get the mic to the lady in yellow, please. Good morning and thank you. My name is Moshe Mate from the Tswane One Stop Safe House for Women. Um, we are privileged to be here today. What we do there, we have got a shelter for women. We also are able to keep young girls when they are in distress. We also are visible in police stations, in VEC centers, whereby if a woman has been brought in, raped or beaten, they don't start with the police, but our social workers take care of them. Mm. We have seen a gap minister where girls of 18 that were in foster care, once they are exited from foster care, they've got nowhere else to go. Mm. They must fend for themselves. Imagine a baby that was in foster care or children's homes all her life. All of a sudden, when she turns 18 and she thought this was home, and then because now there is no money coming in, nobody wants it. We are going to be launching a, a, a home for them in number one, Proust Street in Pretoria. It's a beautiful double-story mm. building that we have renovated, mm. where we say to these girls, this is home for you. Mm. From 18 years, those that are being abused and neglected because there's no money, they must come home. Yeah. We have named the home Lerato Amazing Grace Home for Girls because it's by the grace of God, really, that it is up. We also are taking girls that have been rehabilitated from substance abuse because you find that communities and families have not been prepared enough that your daughter has been using drugs, but now she's rehabilitated. When she comes back home, she's called Nyaupe. It's not a joke to her. The siblings, when they fight, they are going to insult her with what she has been strong enough to recover from. So straight from rehab homes, they come to Lerato Amazing Grace Home, where they'll be loved, nurtured, encouraged to come to school, given life skills, and the rest is history. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that's an exciting uh, project, which I must say, I think it comes to the point again of saying, as you do the work, to what extent is society receptive 
not because of me being a biological parent of that child, but for us as a society in taking back those kids because uh, it also becomes important for them to be incorporated into society where they don't continue to be in isolation. I agree with you, you are right. There is a gap because when they turn 18, the so-called thought of that they are adults, they can fend for themselves. Mm -hmm. I think as, uh, as government, we've got to look at that through social development. What is it that we need to do when they are unable to be accepted, whether by their families or by society as a whole? How do we come in in bridging that gap to their adulthood? Because I think that's the gap of them now moving to adulthood where there's a gap which might take them back. And also the issue of stigma. As we all know at various points, we are very good as society in stigmatizing uh, people. Even if we, when they've changed, we continue calling them names. Uh, and I think it's some of the issues, attitudes, um, which we've got to start changing and making sure that uh, we in whichever way, when somebody has changed, even if somebody is involved in something, to calling people by names. We must stop mm -hmm. those kind of issues mm -hmm. if we really have to change people because we create hatred, we create resentment, mm -hmm. and, and it's some of those things which leads to people committing violence in our society. And re-offending if, re if they were again, again, if yes. offenders. Yes. So I'm just saying we've got to look at all those issues. It, it, it's, uh, as, I've, as I'm saying, these are societal issues. Mm -hmm. They cannot be handled by one sector of society. They need all of us because if that child falls back into a loving and a caring community, she or he can be one of the best mm -hmm. members of society. Who, who knows? That might be your future president. Indeed, indeed. You know? and, and one of the people who also have a role to play, of course, the media fraternity, the media sector, also very crucial in this equation. So I'm going to go to table number one. Uh, I believe Puti is there from the Film and Publication Board wanting to speak about this campaign, uh, how effective it has been. And perhaps you can also speak about the role of the, of the media to address that quickly. We literally have got two minutes to wrap, so I'm going to give you 30 seconds to say your best. I will try to keep to that. Thank you, Honorable Minister. I think as, as a young man in South Africa, I must commend the work that you have been doing um, for the fact that you have been including men. Um, we are encouraged. I think there's a greater part of us that are saying, count me in as well. So from the... F Thank you. From the Film and Publication Board, I mean, largely our mandate has been, you know, uh, the protection of children against uh, harmful content mm. uh, or sexual uh, abuse. Now, my question is, I think you have covered much of the monitoring and evaluation uh, part of it, but specifically to, to the campaign, are there intentions maybe after five years, you know, maybe this is your baseline after including men, are there intentions of maybe a study or research uh, that would inform maybe the change in perception, you know, of men uh, pertaining to uh, the treatment of, of women and, and children in our society. Thank you. No, thanks very much, Tito, for that. I must say, indeed, we will continue to the evaluation, but also to see whether we're making progress, change of attitudes, change of behavior. If we can see more fathers taking their children to school and more caring where we don't get reports where fathers or uncles have abused their little girls, then we'll say there's change. We need to continue dealing with this matter. It must be an ongoing, on program, assessments on a regular basis, research. The research institutions must play a critical role in mm -hmm. contributing and making sure that are we able to change the schedule of violence in our society. We'll have to leave it there. We have run out of time. Minister, thank you very much for having joined us. And to all the stakeholders who took the time to come through this morning and share your views, your opinions, and ask the questions, thank you very, very much for that once again. I think your contribution is priceless, especially when it comes to tackling this issue. So with that, it's how we say goodbye to you from the Santon Convention Center. As uh, the minister has rightly said, that although it is a, a wrap of official proceedings when it comes to the 16 days of activism for no violence against women and children, the job continues. So long as the violence continues, then the work will not stop. So 365 days is uh, what we're looking for. Every day is a day that you and I should come together and fight this good fight. We'll leave it there for now. It's back to Valen.